Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to a very chilled out plant haul. A lot is going on as I'm sure it is with everyone right now. I'm waiting for a ton of parcels. Things here are just ridiculous. I think I'm waiting on about six parcels and I'm really hoping they get here for Christmas and I know I'm not alone in that. I know everyone's really stressed in the minute with parcels because it sucks waiting for these gifts and I ordered some of mine on the 30th of November so it's a little bit ridiculous that I'm still waiting for them but these things happen. It's very hectic this week with Christmas coming up. So today I have for you a plant haul. Now then, I've had every plant here, I think except one of them that's over here for maybe three to four weeks, I would say. This one, I will tell you what it is when I lift it up, but that's come in maybe about three days ago. So that one's quite new. I do have a couple on the shelves behind me that you may and may not be able to see. And they are potted up in different things. I have two here in Lekka and the rest are in Lechuza self-watering pots. So I'll go over that as and when. So I'm just going to start by picking up a plant, because why not? So this plant I'm about to show you, I've wanted one for a little while. It hasn't been a burning desire for me personally, but I know my mom really, really, really wanted one of these. So I tried to find one earlier this year, I think before I started filming the documentary, and I did find one, but it dried up like a Dorito. So I tried again recently and I got it in. So the plant I'm about to show you is not acclimated in any way, shape or form. So I might show you it now and it looks great, but in two weeks it might be just nothing. So bear that in mind. But this here is my Calathea White Fusion. I don't know if I'm going to be able to look after this or not. I don't struggle with Calathea, so maybe it'll be fine. I do have two of these, so I did get one for my mum for Christmas. Merry Christmas, mum. It's done exactly the same way as this. It's already in a pot as well. So I've just picked up one. They're both kind of the same. I think this one is slightly larger. I think I'm giving this one to mum. I'll tilt this towards the camera as best I can, but it's a little bit difficult because Dum Dum over here actually went and put water in this thing. So that's not very helpful. I should have really drained them. But if I just show you there, if I hide my little face, that's how it's doing. It's a little bit crispy, but mm, I hope it's going to be okay. I really do. These pots, by the way, I know everyone's waiting for my Lechuza review. It's going to happen. Just give me some time. I know I keep saying that every week, like it's going out of fashion. But I'll just give you a quick note, I guess, about this pot specifically. This is the Lechuza Mini Deltini. I'll show you in a minute a Deltini because I have two that are potted up here anyway. These pots are good, but they're deceivingly small. I have to say that to you. I really do. And if anyone has one of these, you'll know what I'm talking about. I don't know how many times I've picked a plan for this pot and thought that it was going to be small enough for the pot and it's just not because you think this is fine. But if I just lift this up, you can see here that that's obviously a lot smaller. Obviously, it makes sense that it's smaller because there's a water reservoir in the bottom, but you don't really think about it when you look at the pot, right? And that is quite a difference there. That's not a lot of root. So for this plant here, that's absolutely fine because it was actually perfect for this plant as it happens, but you might find that it's just the wrong size for you. So that's something to note. I'll obviously mention my observations on the slightly larger one as well. I do recommend them, don't get me wrong. It's just, it's gonna be smaller than what you think. So bear that in mind. But yeah, really nice plants. I hope mine doesn't die. I hope my mum's doesn't die because it's kind of a Christmas present or part of her Christmas presents. I'm sure it'll be fine, right? What's the worst that can happen here, right? What's the worst that can happen? So that is her. I'm going to set her down and I think I'll just quickly move on. So next plant, next plant, next plant. Okay, we'll do this one down here. So the next plant I have to show you, I'm going to put it on the table while I talk about it because some anthurium enthusiasts among you probably probably know what it is. Um, it shouldn't be too much of a stranger to this channel. So I'll pop it down here. I've had this for a little while now, actually. Um, it's doing really well in this pot. I had to get one of these because there is one on the living wall. And I look at it all the time and I miss it because I don't always see it on the living wall. So I really wanted a mini version of it, so to speak, to have in here. So this here is Anthurium Chamberlainii. And if you don't know what it's cool about Anthurium Chamberlainii, that's a bit of a mouthful, the leaves come in a brownie purple color, which hopefully is throwing on camera. I think it is. It does look kind of half purple, half brown. In some lights it is more brown, but the leaves come in like this and then they will fade to a green. Please note the damage on that leaf. I haven't removed it just because there's energy in the leaf and that one's got a couple of holes in there, I think. But that's how it starts. It starts like this and then they will eventually fade to this. But generally I would say the plant keeps this color for much longer. For example, when an Anthurium vichii gets a new leaf, obviously you get that beautiful bronze color. This is different. This really stays there. I do think as well, the leaf hardens off to a deeper kind of gray green color. It's really odd. Um, it, that's more visible on my larger one on the wall, less so on this one, but it's nice. So it has this leaf here. 
it has a damaged one here, it has one underneath, and then it has one here. So it's really, really nice. It is also in a Lechuza pot. This is the Lechuza Deltini. This pot is cool. Do I recommend it? Yes, but, and I will say this one thing, it's good for aroids because it's tall, right? Note this, this is great. And this is really good for things like Queen Anthurium, right? Because your leaves come down, so it gives a really nice height to it. But for stuff like this, or literally anything with height to it, it's not so good. And it's not so good, really, only if you're putting it on a shelf. So if you're putting it on a windowsill, on a table, great, go for it, right? But for example, and I can't actually reach these shelves, I don't know how close I look to them, but I'm not very close to them, I'm about a meter away. But this pot is a really shit size for the shelf because I think to get any plant on, you probably have, if I put this on the shelf now, I reckon there's probably literally that much between, you know, the, the, that shelf and the next shelf. I don't know what I was saying there. So for that reason, it's not good, but if you're not worried about shelves, it's really good. What I do recommend for the shelves, and you probably can't see it, but this queen back here is in a L-hole self-watering system. There's an insert and then there's an L-hole pot on the outside of it. That is good. You do get a little bit more space, not a ton of space, but you get way more than this. So just be careful if you like the look of these, but you're doing it for these shelves or something similar. These are the Ikea Vitzjo shelves, by the way. So just something to note, it's a little bit tricky if you want to put plants on your shelves. So. Maybe don't do that. That is a little bit of an issue with me because I don't know where to put things. I do actually have stuff on the top of the shelves that you cannot see. If you know of any self-watering pots that are on the shallower side that are not tea for you because they suck, um, so something like the L-hole models, please feel free to mention those down below because I would love to take a look at them and maybe somebody else does as well. Anyway, moving on, they get really sexy now. I've got to say, if you're into Anthurium, these get really, really sexy, or at least they do, in my opinion. So this next one, I will pull this one up because this one's quite big. It's in Lekka. Hopefully you can't see that. I can't tell if you can see that on the video. I can't tell. This one I've wanted for, honestly, ages ages and ages and ages. I didn't really pull the plug on it until very recently, maybe about a month ago. So I'm really, really happy to have this. I don't know how I'm gonna tilt this up without making a huge mess, so I might not be able to, but Anthurium lovers will absolutely recognize this, 100%. And it is, it's beautiful, honestly, it's beautiful. I'm gonna tilt it the best I can. Uh, I knew that was gonna happen. I'm already draining water all over the table. <gasps> That's so cold. Okay, so this here, I'm gonna do my best, is Anthurium Luxuriance, and it is absolutely beautiful. I am so sorry that I cannot really move this plant very much. It is full of water. It is ridiculous. It does have a new leaf here. If I just put it against my cheek, you might be able to see it. It's got a new leaf coming in. I think it's slightly crisped up on the way in, so it's not a perfect leaf, but never mind, it's growing, right? If you've never felt it before, you've never seen it before, it is really thick and meaty. It's beautiful. It's very rigid as well. It's probably the most rigid anthurium I've ever felt. Not that I make a habit of feeling them, I guess. Obviously, this corrugation is absolutely stunning. Let me see if I can just tilt it just right to the camera. There, look at that. Honestly, look at that. Is that not a thumbnail right there? That's probably this week's thumbnail, is it not? It's beautiful, isn't it? Now, the cool thing, and I didn't know this about this Anthurium until I purchased it, actually, is the back of the petiole. Honestly, it's great. I didn't know about this. So I hope you can see it. Also, the back of the Anthurium generally is gorgeous. Hopefully, you can see this on camera. I cannot move any closer, but it has a really cool ripple on the back of the petiole right about where my finger is, similar to how... What has this? Plowmanii Eye has this a lot, Philodendron Plowmanii Eye. It's got these cool ripples, but because the petiole on this plant, and again, this is so hard to explain, it's not really round. It's like, honestly, it's almost like a pentagon shape. It's really weird. So it has the ripple on every side of the petiole. I know that's really hard to explain. I'll try my best to just move a little bit closer and try and show you it. But just rotate it ever so slightly like this. This is where depth of field on cameras help. You might be able to see what I'm talking about. It is just the strangest thing. It's the strangest thing and I love it. And I understand, obviously you're not going to see the backs of the plants a lot, but it's just cool. And for me to see, no offense to anthuriums, but I see the same ass petioles coming in this door every day. It's nice to see something really different. I wanted this for so long and I'm so happy that I got it. I'm absolutely over the moon. So this is definitely one of my favorites at the minute. 
But as I say, the back of the petiole was a really nice surprise to me. And that is Lekka just dropping everywhere. It's also just running down my hand as well. I'm going to put it down because I'm going to get soaked. And unfortunately, I have another plant here in Lekka to show you. It is all over the table. One more time, because it's absolutely mind-blowing. Anthurium luxuriens. I sometimes accidentally call it radicans, and I don't know why, but it's Anthurium luxuriens. It is stunning. It's living up to his name. Once more on the back, because it's gorgeous. If you like things like Alocasia dragon scale, um, I know that's not an Anthurium, obviously, but it, it reminds me of that on the back a little bit because of the veining and everything is so prominent. And Alocasia dragon scale are great for that. I don't have one in here. I only have a silver dragon. But it reminds me of that a little bit, just because of how meaty it is. It's very similar in that sense. I don't know how available these are. I'm pretty sure they're not the easiest things to get, but I'm so pleased to have one. Honestly, this is just, this is just the best thing. Honestly, it really is. I love it. So the next plant, I'm going to try my best to pronounce. I'm not great with it. Um, if anybody doesn't know me, hi, I'm Kaylee Allen. I like to butcher my plant names quite a lot, but I'm going to have a go. This is another plant, by the way, with a really interesting petiole that I didn't know about. This is a cool thing. This doesn't get enough press, but this is the, let me get this right, Anthurium Velenio, Velen, oh no, Velen, Veleneorum, Veleneorum, Veleneorum. We're going with that. Sorry, I know I butchered it. This is in Lekka, by the way. It's doing beautifully, although it is one leaf, but it's so good. It gives me Queen Anthurium vibes a little bit. I'll turn it up because this one should be much easier to cover because it's smaller. It's going to drip everywhere all the same. There it is. Let me try and tip it a little bit. That's what it looks like. It is very, very pale in color. And I think that's kind of how this is supposed to be. It's possible it could get a bit darker. I think I blasted it a little bit, but it's really cool. But honestly, the petiole, you've never seen anything like it. Well, at least I haven't anyway. And I've seen quite a few petioles in my time. But this one is, it's triangular, actually. I don't know how easy this is going to be shown to you. So I'm going to put my hand behind it. I'm just going to rotate it the best I can with one hand on the camera. But can you see that? It's totally triangular and it's awesome. I didn't know this was a thing because literally every anthurium that I know and love is round. So between the luxurians, which is unbelievable in the back, right? Talk about party in the back. This one's really cool too. So I don't like this one as much as the luxurians because that's just been a bit of a wish list anthurium for me. If I hadn't got this now, it would have been on my wish list for next year, which is coming by the way. But this one is really nice as well. It's just not quite as much of a favorite for me. Um, possibly due to the color, actually. I don't know how I feel about the lighter green right now. We'll see. But for me, it's Queen Anthurium vibes, but not. It's, you know, a bit stumpier, a bit shorter and everything else. Really nice, quite meaty as well. It's not obviously as meaty as the Luxurians, but it is quite meaty. This is just the hardest thing to do. There. Hopefully that focuses. This is the most awkward position to be in, by the way. Really, really cute little... Anthurium. I cannot tell you how well it grows, how easy it is, how difficult it is. Same thing for the Luxurians. I don't even think I've heard any information on them just because I haven't actually looked it up because I am lazy as hell. So I can't tell you how easy or difficult these are. Obviously, I'll let you know in time. The Luxurians strikes me as being easy. I don't know if you own one and I'm wrong, tell me. It strikes me as being easy. This one, obviously, with it being velvet, strikes me as being less easy. So we'll see. But it's really, really nice. I say velvet, it is more of the suede type variety that you get with Anthurium. I always think that philodendrons are more velvety and Anthurium are more suede in texture. But it is really cute. It's a little bit stumpy, but it's cute. So this is Anthurium Villeniorum. 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 I give up. I really give up. Hopefully now we can be a little bit drier. I did have some blue roll. Where is it? Oh, it's down there. Wait a minute. <sighs> yes, boy. Okay, let me just dry this up because it, it's, it, it, honestly, it's not funny anymore. It's a little bit ridiculous. I don't really want to be soaked. It's not, I'm just not feeling it today. So I have one more amazing, amazing anthurium to show you. And then there's two plants on my shelves that I quickly want to talk about. You have seen them before, probably but I want to talk about them anyway because we're here, right? The last Anthurium I have to show you is probably an acquired taste. I honestly think that I'm not sure what you're all going to make of this if you don't know what it is, if you haven't seen it before. But what better time than the present to test it out, right? Because if you don't like it on here, then you won't put it on your wish lists because we're all going to be doing that very soon, right? So 
This anthurium is, as I say, it is an acquired taste. It is a little bit weird, I would say. It reminds me of a pig's ear a little bit. Don't ask. I can't explain it. I just, I can't really explain it. But if you own one, maybe you might agree. I don't know. But I'm just going to waste no time in putting it on the table. This is my beautiful, amazing, weird new Anthurium peltigerum or peltigerum. I don't know how you say it, as per, but this plant, don't care about that. This plant is weird, right? Imagine, see if I can try and describe it. It feels really meaty, kind of like a pig's ear. I think that's where I have got the analogy from, but it's actually, you know what? It's actually shining a lot under these lights and it didn't at the time when I had it downstairs and I'm gonna just look at it up close. But it's kind of like a forgetty eye crossed with, oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm just going to put it in front of my head while I talk. Like a forgetty eye crossed with, um, help me out, people that own it. I don't know. Uh, crossed with a Vici eye, maybe, but a little bit meatier than that, I would say. It's a really weird anthurium. It really, really is. And it's quite fibrous as well. It's just so interesting to me. I absolutely love it. It does have a round petio, so this one. The party is not in the petiole. It's kind of just in the front of it. See if I can put it right up to the camera. It's a little bit curved still. It hasn't fully straightened out, but that's him. He's weird. Don't get me wrong. Can I get even closer with that just to really drive the point home? I'll try and rotate him really slowly the best I can without dropping him because he's really hard to rotate. Um, he's just a lovely little plant. He's really, really weird. Now, I think these are becoming a little bit of a thing from what I see on Facebook. A few people have kind of found out about these and I think they're hunting for them. Um, that's kind of how I found out about them. That's the only reason I'm telling you any of this. I wouldn't know about this had it not been for Facebook. I hadn't seen them before. So this was a new one for me, actually. The others, obviously, I knew about. This one I did not. So it's really, really cool and I'm really happy to have it. As I say, I got this about a month ago and it's doing really, really well. No new growth yet, but it is pretty gorgeous. I just wish it would flatten out a bit more. It's been like this ages now. But yeah, really, really weird. Kind of like a forgetty eye crossed with a Vici eye and it's a little bit meaty. So it's a little bit thicker than a Vici eye because Vici eye is quite thin. It's a little bit more like a Chamberlain eye. There's a lot of eyes in here. So before it becomes pitch black in here, I'm going to show you the last two plants I have to show you because they're here basically. So this here, somebody correctly picked up on in a recent video because it was in the background. So that there is a, what is it? Marble Queen Pothos. Yes, really. I saw this in a garden center and funny enough in the UK, I'm not saying they're rare or even uncommon, but in the UK, you never see this one passed around. It's always every other variety of Epipremnum. So I saw this and it was in quite a big pot. So I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to get it. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna trail it in here, it's gonna look great. And I'll probably take cuttings of it and put it on the wall. But he's really, really nice. Above that, I will get you the last plant that I have to show you. You will have seen it, but I'm gonna show you it again up close. So the last plant I have to show you, if you have seen my Instagram, then you have seen this plant. But I really want to show you in person because it's gorgeous and I'm very proud of it. So this probably should be in my Hoyer cabinet. It isn't. It's in here for now. That's probably because I kind of love looking at it a little bit. But this is, uh, what is it? Hoya AH074 Silver. I don't know if you're supposed to say silver on the end of that or it's just AH074. Let me know down below because I'm really not sure. But this is really, really nice. It's quite large, right? And that's kind of why I had to buy it. A friend tipped me off about this online and I really had to pick it up. I just had to. The second I saw it, I was like, that's mine. That's mine. So I got this in. Now I think from what I know, I will repeat what I know from a previous video. I think the leaves on this differ. They're a little bit more chaotic um, than other splashed hoyer, I think. So if I show you the variegation here, oh my goodness, look at that. Holy heck, that looks beautiful. So these are quite silver. And then as you progress down, it's less so, but it's still kind of all over the place. I'll hold it here quite close to the camera because it's getting royally dark in here, which is really unfortunate. But if you think that I've had one of these before, you're not going crazy. I did. So a while ago, I did a Hoya haul, I think. And I had a Hoya AH074 cutting in Lekka. And I think I actually unboxed that on the documentary at one point. I think that's what it was. I do have that. It's fine. It just hasn't grown. This is pure greed that made me buy this. This was eyes bigger than my wallet kind of situation because I saw it and it was huge. And I'm very impatient. I really wanted it. So I do still have the other one. It's fine. It's not really showing any signs of growth. It's just kind of chilling. But as soon as I saw this, I just, I, honestly, I just had to. It's just great. Look at it. It's beautiful. So it should go in my cabinet. 
it might. I haven't decided. It probably should go in the cabinet, right? That's kind of why I got the cabinet. But we'll see how it goes. For now, it's sat on my shelf. I'm getting on okay with my shelf. I've got a lot of gaps, and that's due to the fact that these pots are a little bit tall in some cases. Like, I'm just struggling a little bit with the self-watering situation in here. Because honestly, it gets so hot in here that if things aren't in self-watering, they will just die. I, even if I were to leave for three days, I'd come back and things would be bone dry. And that's even with high humidity. So it's a little bit of a hot box in here. Anything like this in Lekka, I'm going to put back downstairs. I'm not going to have in here until I get pots. But the rest of it should be staying in here. So this little dude gets to join me in this studio. He's probably going to have to go on top of the shelves because he is too tall. But he's beautiful and I love him. I think if you had to ask me my favorite plant from the hall, it's going to be the Luxurians because it's just great. And it really surprised me with the petio in the back. So that's really awesome. Second favorite, maybe this guy. Third favorite, probably Chamberlainii because it's kind of personal to me. So anyway, guys, that is it for this really rambly, chilled out haul. Again, very busy. I'm sure we all are with packages and everything else. So I hope you're having a great week. I hope Christmas isn't stressing everybody out too much. Any opinions on any of the plants I have today, such as this bad boy, let me know below. Tell me if you like him. Tell me if you think he's ugly. I'm sure he can take it. <laughs> and I will see you next week on the next video. Bye, guys.